Well, it would be more professional if I had have planned an intro and had also talked to you about what we're going to be discussing <laughs> on the call, but <laughs> I've had a lot to organise. So, it's okay. I'll cut your break. Go on. All right. So Chris is a very good friend of mine, uh, someone I've looked up to for a very long time. Um, I learnt, I've learned so much from Chris. I think it probably started with learning about uh, virtual assistants, learning about outsourcing to the Philippines quite a lot of years ago, um, which is really, if you look back at what I've done as an entrepreneur, that's just absolutely fundamental type of knowledge that has served me till this day. Um, Chris runs a, a virtual assistant matchmaking service called Virtual Staff Finder, which I'm a customer of. And I just hired a VA last week to work with me from, from Virtual Staff Finder. Um, and every entrepreneur I know, you know, who is, who is doing stuff at the kind of level that Chris is doing stuff has a virtual team. And Chris literally wrote the book on it, Virtual Freedom, um, a published book that sold tens of thousands of copies um, and once again doubled all of the stats from any book I've ever written because he's just that kind of guy. Everything he does is twice as good as everyone else, which is kind of frustrating, but it's always good to have people to look up to. Um, I mentioned on the last call, obviously very good looking, handsome, talented. He sings. Um, he dances. He... Maybe I should start saying things you don't do. Wait, I haven't finished all your businesses yet. So he has a, a uh, <laughs> call centre with 300-odd staff, um, an Go entrepreneurship on. for... <laughs> told you. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> an on entrepreneurship community called Youpreneur. Um, he's always closing, which you can see from the shirt. He's a great sales guy. He's not afraid to admit it. Um, he's an epic podcaster, content creator, an amazing public speaker. If, you, if it's not pissing you off already, then um, I, I'm, I'd be surprised. But he's a total all-round boss and he's a very nice guy. And uh, we're very lucky to have him on the call today. So thank you for coming, Chris. It's my pleasure, sir. And thank you very much for your extremely professional intro <laughs> and all the nice things that you said about uh, my head, my face, uh on the last call it's funny how literally i come in and you guys are like i'm like that's ridiculous and kevin what did kevin say about he's one of those rare guys that can do no hair and no beard and get away with it brilliant. i think he i think he referred to it as some sort of a god-given gift or something right. like that, which was great oh dude i love kevin he's a great guy he is great he's yeah he's that was a great session um a lot of benefit for people so t today we're Oh, and a good accent as well. Yes, sorry, I forgot that. Um, I try to get all the people on with the great accents. Um, so today, so with the challenge, some people are following this day by day. Some people are just coming on the sessions because, you know, they, they get to listen to Chris Ducker live, which is not a, is something they get to do all the time. Um, but for the people who are following the, the structure, it's website day. Um, so Kevin's session was about copywriting. Um, I... I mean, I could talk to you, as, as I said, all the stuff you do, we could talk about any number of different things. And, and you've said you're happy to stick around for sort of 45, 50 minutes. Um, so I want to ask a few questions about websites because I know everything you do is at such a high standard. And I think that has a big impact on why you're able to succeed with all of your projects. Um, but then I'm just going to open it up at the end. You guys can ask whatever questions you want. I'm going to favour people who call in. Uh, with you've got the, the the confidence to put their face on the screen and ask a question, but also will I answer questions on the right hand side? So, um, website stuff. You've got a number of different brands, and you always execute them very very well. So, um, I guess a good place to start would be maybe maybe talk about Youpreneur since that's the most recent one. Um, how do you go from okay, I want to launch a membership because I know you, you were talking about that probably the last time I saw you quite long before it came out. How do you go from that to having this membership executed the way it's executed with all the members um, start to finish from a, a website point of view, like like design, platforms, who do you talk to, who, who do you get involved, all of it? Well, okay, so I... You know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of blessed because and I use that word. I, I've been using that word a lot this year. Like I've 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 noticed that when I've done podcast interviews, I keep saying I'm blessed. I'm very blessed or I've been blessed, too. And I really, truly feel genuinely very blessed to be in the position where I am now, because I want to say, though, I am not you know that this is not 
overnight. You know, like I want to make it clear. And I know you're all about the grind and the hustle and getting shit done and all that stuff. So you appreciate that. But a lot of people, you know, they look at anybody with any level of success and they think, oh, I want to do that, but I want to do it in a New York minute. And that, it doesn't work that way. I've been active online since January 2010. So I'm now sick. In fact, actually, tomorrow, January 23, will be six years <laughs> active online. I remember because that's when I hit publish on my first ever blog post. That was it. So um, I, 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 I truly am very, very blessed to be in the position where I am now, where I've got all the contacts I need to fulfill these kind of projects and get them out there and get them live and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah. that doesn't mean that you can't, if you don't have them already, it doesn't mean that you can't go out there and get those contacts. It's easier now than what it was six years ago as well to it's, find it's those. Also, but it's also, you, you don't, um, you're not going to accept something that if they deliver something to you that isn't executed the way you want it, you know, you're, you've, you've obviously got a high standard about the way you want oh, things yeah. done. And that, that really does fall back to the entrepreneur because, because contractors, or even the team that they really can only be guided by the entrepreneur making the decision. Exactly. Um, precisely. And I've just looked at my face and I'm really, really white. I mean, I'm really white <laughs> anyway, but that's ridiculous. Wait a second. <laughs> so right. uh, I am blessed is a, a word that uh, the Merrymaker sisters who are on here say all the time. And someone said they don't like that word. And they suggest that you can use I am stoked instead if you're a dude and you don't like the word blessed. Okay, cool. Well, I'm, 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 I'm blessed and stoked um, to be in the position where I am today. Website, Upana. So um, basically, uh, chrisducker.com, which is my own, you know, my online hub, my home, sits on Rainmaker. Um, and for those of you who maybe don't know what it is, Rainmaker is the full-on digital publishing platform that was put together by Brian Clark and his rock stars over at Copy Blogger Media, which is now actually known just simply as Rainmaker Digital. They renamed the company you know, then last year. So um, they actually had me come on board as one of their early kind of influencer type clients, redesigned ChrisDucker.com for me and blew me away with how beautiful and clean and minimalistic, but still very hardcore with my brand in terms of lots of energy and enthusiasm and, and kind of in your faceness and all that sort of stuff. And so it was just, it was, um, it was a simple transition for me to walk to, you know, to, to go to them and say to them, I'm going to, you know, I'm pulling the trigger on this membership site that I spoke to you about. And I've been planning it since mid 2013, right? So or, yeah, mid 2013. So I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling the trigger. I want to build it out on Rainmaker as well, and I need you to do the landing page for me. So obviously, it was down to me to first come up with all the content, and I, I wrote all the content myself, which has been quite an interesting journey, actually, because that was the first full-blown landing page that I've personally written every single word on uh, up to that point. Up to that point, I've always gone to copywriting people, I've always, which is strange to hear, maybe, because I'm a sales guy, born and raised, but I have had problems from a sales perspective in terms of written word. I can sell face to face, I can sell over the phone, I can sell on phone calls, but I've, I did, I've struggled with copywriting for quite some time. And it was interesting seeing obviously Kevin talking about that stuff as well. He's a master at it, he truly is. And so, you know, I'm looking at, you know, looking at uh, 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 Kev and looking at guys like Ray Edwards, um, who is a, a monster copywriter as well, and, and really just learning from them as much as I can. And so youpreneur.com is the first landing page I've ever written every single word on. Um, and so once that went over to them, honestly, they're so good and they just get me and my brand and what I'm all about that I had no design brief for them. I had no, you know, uh, 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 guess instructions to give them in any way whatsoever i just said here's the copy i've broken it down into different sections so that that's the way i want the page to roll um get to work kind of thing uh they came back to me i think about maybe 10 days later with an initial draft and what you see live at youpreneur.com now is about 90 percent of what went live and peter shankman is here <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Peter? 
I, I literally was just showing my wife. I did a blab with Joe Com today, and I'm like, holy shit, Chris Ducker's talking. I got to say hi. He's with Dan Norris, of all people. So I had to, get, I had to give a quick hi. Say hi to my wife and daughter. There's the daughter. There's the wife. Hey, guys. I did not mean to interrupt and take over. I just wanted to say hello. Miss you both. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the Philippines. <laughs> Only meant to interrupt and take over. You, I know you. You totally meant to do it. Chris, you know what I'll do, Chris? I'll go make a cup of coffee for you right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Oh, thanks, Peter. Peter. Bye, guys. Love you. <laughs> See you, mate. I love Peter. Well, he's, he's, he's he's coming out the tropical think tank in a couple of months yeah. to speak. He's he's our opening keynote. He's going to be rocking. Can't wait. So yeah, that's how the landing page for Youpreneur was was born. Uh, and then obviously once you sign in um, to the member portal, once you join, um, you know that's when the you know the inside of, of the guts of the design is is shown. But uh, in terms of the the landing page itself, man. I honestly, I'd love to say that it was all me and I did everything and I micromanaged the entire project, but I didn't. Um, mm. I probably would have tried to have micromanaged it five years ago, but uh, nowadays I'm just, you know, take care of it kind of thing. Yeah. And it came out great. I love it. So with with the process of, of putting the words in and, and thinking about, because you also do video, you, I've seen you do quite a few yes. video sales videos. Um, yes. What, what what's your thinking process in, in coming up with the words like like do you do you go into a dark room somewhere and drink some coffee and like what's the process it was interesting i wrote the script for that video um we wanted to shoot a long form and then a short form video so long form web videos being really eight nine minutes tops right. uh, short form being two to three minutes um and so i i kind of I wanted to focus in on really just showing people that they weren't alone in their entrepreneurial pursuits as people building a business out of their brand. That's why it's you, Preneur, mm. right? It's about it's all about helping people build a business from their brand. So coaches, authors, speakers, bloggers, podcasters, experts, that kind of crowd. That's our demographic. Um, yeah. And so I really focused in on one, the loneliness factor uh, mm. and, and the fact that it can be a lonely journey, uh, particularly if you're working out of home a lot of the time. Um, and then I also focused in on the importance of surrounding yourself with other like-minded people. They were the two big kind of pain points. And I know that you know, they kind of one in the same almost. And I knew that I could kind of elaborate on those a lot more in the video. Uh, but obviously, I started off the video with a little bit of my, um, you know, my story and the burnout and the back surgery and all that sort of stuff, because people can really resonate with that shit. And, mm. and that's really what it comes down to. And then we went into, you know, pressing those pain points and then providing the solutions to those problems, namely a community, learning, support, accountability, that sort of type of thing. Um, and I, I, wrote I, I i actually filmed that in april 2014 uh, sorry 2015 and we launched september 2015 right. so it shows you I, I filmed it in america when i was there. caleb wojcik great videographer does a lot of oh, stuff yeah. for that um and so i was in and we rented a beautiful loft in san diego off of airbnb for one night and we go <laughs> in there and we 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 set everything else up to it was it was incredible. It, it was a, a great experience doing like a full blown video shoot like that for the first time with lights and multiple cameras and all that sort of stuff. And it was it was it came out great. And we went out in the afternoon and did some B roll. And uh, Urs and Charlie were with me on the trip, and we shot some B roll of us playing foosball and walking around San Diego and all that sort of stuff. It was great. It was great. But it's funny, you know, we split tested that. Um, or oh, let me go back to the script rather. I did this. I, I initially wrote the script on the plane going over. Um, and then I sat down with Pat and he basically ripped the script to shreds, um, ripped me to shreds in the process. And uh, he was like, you know, you're, you're not writing another landing page. You know, this is a, a video like you got to talk, just freaking talk, man. Talk, right, right. you know? Yeah. Um, and so. We kind of rewrote the entire script, or rather, I did in my hotel room, and um, and then literally two days later, I shot the video. So it was it wasn't necessarily a last minute thing; it was planned. But the fact of the matter was, is that it was a big lesson that I learned there. Big, big lesson that even though you've done the job and you deem it complete, 
unless it's done right, you should not go ahead with that job, whether it's a video script, a landing page, a blog post, a, a speaking presentation, whatever it is. And that for yeah, me was the yeah. big thing. Was I, I did literally rewrite the entire script a day before the shoot. Um, and I'm glad I did because it probably would have fallen on deaf ears otherwise, you know? Mm. Can I ask a quick question about the script? Is it is it actual word for word when you do a video like that? Or are you giving yourself some some bullet points um, and someone's firing questions at you? Yeah. How does that work? It's it's a little tough for me to be word for word. I'm more of an ad lib type guy. Yeah, uh, that's, instance, that's you know, what I was asking. When I when I you know when I um when I present live and I have like a 45 minute keynote session, I'll only actually produce slides and rehearse a presentation which is around 35 minutes because I need that leeway of 10 minutes to be able to interact with the audience to be able to you know ad lib to be able to throw in you know every keynote speaker has four or five canned jokes that they will throw into their presentations um if they feel uh like it's needed to lift people's energy or you know whatever the case may be so i need that 10 minutes man and so we did the similar thing with the script where we knew it was going to be like an eight minute video and 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 so we we ended up um I think we ended up writing enough for around six and a half minutes. Um, but it was, you know, we used the teleprompter. Uh, oh, okay. And obviously I, I rehearsed, you know, what, seven, eight, nine, ten times maybe um, right. before we shot. Uh, but we, we did use a teleprompter. But I go off script several times. Um, I'd like to think it's to the point where it's so smooth that you don't notice it when you watch the video. I know when I did it, obviously when I watch it back, yeah. but um, I like to think that it's a pretty smooth transition between script and ad lib. Um, let's see what everybody else says. Go to youpreneur.com and check out the video when we're done, everybody. Then tweet me at Chris Ducker. I'm curious to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm actually kind of surprised that, that you've gone down to like a teleprompter sort of level, um, but it does make a lot of sense. I, I don't do a lot of video, but we, we did some videos for the Call of Duty beer stuff for Black Ops and we had the, the main video we did for Activision, we had a, a director, a, a team of five video guys. We did it in two different states. Um, and it was like filming a fucking movie. It was crazy. Um, yeah. But the, the yeah. level of detail and, you know, like the amount of takes for stuff, it goes into, it, it ended up being a two minute video. And it just looks like a video to me. I mean, to someone who doesn't really understand videos, it just kind of looks like a normal video. But the amount of detail and preparation and stuff that goes into executing a really high quality video, it's almost like if if you can't put together a great video for a landing page, you're almost better not doing a video. Would you, exactly. would you agree with that? I completely agree. I 100% agree with it. And I've seen some awful videos on landing pages. Um, you've got to take that shit down. You can't, you can't put out mediocre content, period, specifically on a freaking sales page you just can't do it you know yeah. yeah um so if you guys want to call in feel free to ask questions about setting up websites um copy even if you want to ask questions that aren't aren't on the topic of the day that's 100 percent fine please call in or ask questions in the right hand side um otherwise i'll keep going with my questions but you did have a question here about youpreneur um i'll put i'll bring it up on the screen i think this was from when we we're talking about uh, the, the youpreneur sales video can you see that question there? Yeah, Chris, when you talk about surrounding yourself with like-minded people, do you mean like a mastermind? Yes, kind of. Uh, I mean, you know, a mastermind group as we know them now as online entrepreneurs is, uh, you know, a group of, say, five to six individuals max that get together on a regular basis, be it weekly, monthly, whatever the case may be. Uh, and they do exactly that. There's a mastermind. There's some sort of a hot seat rotating sort of type of scenario. And you meet up and you talk through troubles and 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 ideas and you brainstorm. And that's basically what a mastermind is um, or, or how we believe it is. Now, the funny thing is I've been masterminding for a decade, but I wasn't calling it a mastermind <laughs> until five years ago. Right. And that is generally, you know, you, you get together with like-minded people to discuss business opportunities on a regular basis. You might call it an accountability partner. You might call it, you know, whatever you want. Um, but honestly, that's fundamentally what a mastermind is. Youpreneur takes that mastermind vibe and puts it on steroids. And, and that's really, it's, it goes beyond um, just discussing business. It is about support it is about a lot of accountability uh from both myself as well as 
um, the other members that are in, you know, the, the community is uh, almost 400 members now in Upana. Um, and just generally speaking, it's it's more than just a mastermind. It, it's a support system. It's a full blown support ecosystem. And man, I'm really, really proud of the way that everybody's helping each other and supporting each other. It's it warms my cold British heart. <laughs> you got some love in this, in this sidebar from current members too for Youpreneur. Kerwin, what's up? That's cool. Hey, Dan. Kerwin. Yes. I just wanted to say hello, man. I'm stalking you again. <laughs> this was Which one are you stalking joke here? I should, I should say the running joke in 2014, I was traveling a lot to promote virtual freedom. And I don't know how many times I saw Kerwin pop up at events that I was speaking at or <laughs> whatever i don't know i mean i i think i lost count like i actually did lo lose count i think we saw each other what five six seven times in one year it was Just, and uh, i i did i i i had an fbi detail on me by the end of the year to make sure that kerwin wasn't actually really wanting to wipe me out it was, uh, the, odds uh, aren't, the odds aren't great that that's pure chance are they i, I know right <laughs> Well, it actually was pure chat, but no, Chris is good. I like his stuff. So thanks for having him in the, on, um, Dan. And you guys are going to learn a lot from Chris. So thanks. And um, good luck with Youpreneur. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. All right, man. Good thanks, to see you. Man. Thanks for coming on. All right. Any, any more stalkers in the house? This is fun. <laughs> we're, we're, getting, we're getting what I just got messaged and asked where we just blab bombed by Peter Shankman. Yes. So that's we a word, blab bombed. Yeah. Yeah, blab bomb. Try and find, try and say that really fast ten times. Something weird's yeah, gonna happen. Not easy. Craig, what's up? Okay, I'm the fat Scottish version that looks like a Chris Ducker. Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know whether you know him or not. But just for a very split second, I thought you were. Um, oh God, uh, uh, London gangster boy, Dave. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, no, I Courtney, Dave Courtney, Dave Courtney. Just for a split second, you look like the ex-London gangster, Dave Courtney, but there you go. Uh, sorry, mate, he's English, so that makes us Scots ten times more scary. Rah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we don't take prisoners, you know. Um, <laughs> you don't. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't, why use a hammer when you can use a, you know, a mallet? <laughs> This, ten, this, ten this is a hammer. scary chat, Dan. What have you set me up with here? We've got Kerwin popping on. on the internet. We're going <laughs> Dave Courtney right now, so you guys just keep, continue talking. By the way, by the way, Chris, right, uh, you went from 400 to 401 members. I, 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 I've just uh, subscribed. Uh, oh, totally. I Fantastic. Know. Thank you, I sir. I, I, funny enough, known you for a while. We, we've actually um, tread the, some of the same boards uh, along with Copy Blogger. Oh, okay. Cool. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I, I was, uh, I was one of the initial um, founding members. Uh, I should put it that way of Rainmaker as well. Okay. So Excellent. on the Rainmaker, on the Rainmaker platform, are you still I was using, there. Are you still using the platform? Now, I took a break from it, and I'll um, because the platform wasn't going the direction I'd hoped for at the time. Right, and um, when I you remember the early days, if you've been there in the early days too, you'll have found that uh, there was no LMS. Yes, they doing, correct. They were doing podcasting, but um, they weren't they weren't going down the route of video. Um, and as you know yourself, right now uh, the Rainmaker platform, I don't. That's the last time I heard, doesn't in, uh, allow you to do uh, blab embeds, etc. Okay. Yeah. No. Right. And you know, I've 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 heard. The, you know, you can embed the lab and all the rest of it. That stuff is good, man. I hope, you know, what I what I like to see is like with Periscope opening up live embedded, you know, tweets. I think that's gold. And I just, I am waiting with bated breath to uh, see Periscope open up the opportunity to be able to embed uh, their scopes onto your website. I think that would be just that would put everything over the top for them. You know, this whole live video thing, when we're on the subject, I'm so freaking excited about it. I really am. Um, I wish it was around five, six years ago, uh, you know, when I first got active online. I love Snapchat. Dan, you're a master of Snapchat. I just want to say something real quick. And I'm not I'm not pissing in your pocket here. I'm being very, very serious. You, your, your, your Snapchats are freaking brilliant. I love everything about them. They're, they're off the cuff. You're so nonchalant, and and just the way that you start sub snaps. 
Well, you, like, don't, you, don't have, you don't have to worry too much if, uh, uh, Dan, if Chris's series, uh, Ducker's series, you know, he's not pissing in your pocket. Us Scots yeah. and English always have a battle with the one size anyway, so we'll win. <laughs> <laughs> got a lapis conversation, and now you we've got one of the very you, you know what they say. No. You know what they say, Danny. You know, being, a, being a Scotsman, they always say, "What do you Scotsmen wear? Why do you Scotsmen wear the kilt?" I says, "You can't put oh, a wee with no bloody trousers." I will tell you, the, the Englishman's wearing trousers, so I say no more. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right. Yes, I have me actually. Right. Okay. I'm, let's get on to that one, shall we? <laughs> no, no, no. See, 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 the English are too direct. You know us. Can you imagine a Scotsman like me on stage talking to a thousand people? We make them laugh first, you know. Yeah, they, they, they're too direct. It's true. No, no, Dad, I followed you for a while, mate. Right? It's because I followed you for a while, mate. And um, I'll be honest with you. I won't deny that I'm, you know, I'm looking to emulate some of what you're doing already, because my background is I'm 46 years old. Um, I hold a bachelor of engineering degree in computing, a master's degree in marketing, and I love um, helping small businesses and and Getting people to be creative with their content, right? Right. You, you, I know that content marketing is a key part to your strategy, right? Um, and I think it's it's something that should be basically the first step for anybody setting up a blog, an online business. You're right. There's no good duplicate content. There's no good content scraping, right? What would you think? What would you say? Is the 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 main gold nugget to content marketing? Um, I I mean I, I don't think it's I don't really think it's one golden nugget per se. I think it's a it's you know to to become a really really good content marketer, you have to take into consideration a number of different things. Um, I think. First and foremost, you need to know what the hell you're talking about. I think first and foremost, um, there's nothing worse than, you know, you know, clicking on some clickbait and then turning up at a website where the author clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, I think also consistency. And Dan, you'll probably um, agree with me on this, mate. You know, you need to be consistently delivering high quality original content on a very, very consistent schedule. Um, if you say you're going to blog every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you better blog every Monday, Wednesday and Friday if you want to build up a community of blog readers. If you say you're going to podcast every Friday or every Tuesday, you need to do you need to do it exactly the same time every single week so that people come to almost expect it. Similar thing happened when I was doing Duckerscopes on Periscope on a very regular basis. Everybody knew, everybody knew, 10 p.m. Eastern Time US, I would be on Periscope for 30 minutes every day, Monday through to Friday. And I went from zero followers to well over 13,000 followers now on Periscope by having that very, very consistent schedule. People come to respect it. When I missed the odd show here and there, I would actually have people tweet me, yo, what's up? There's no, there's no ducker scope today. What's up with that? You know, people, you, you want to become, you, say what? Was that Kerwin tweeting you that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Where are you? You're, you're not on, you're not on Periscope. Where, Where are, are you? you? <laughs> um, no, so I, I really, I, I think consistency and just knowing what the hell you're talking about. And not only that, but also lastly, having a true passion for wanting to serve that audience, not necessarily change their lives because they're the ones that do that at the end of the day by taking action. But, you know, having that passion to truly serve an audience and look after them properly. Well, on a, on a personal note, um, when I said, uh, you know, I mean, look, uh, I've got the recording studio here. We have the, we have the, Oh, well, hang on. I like to what you said there earlier on about the light. We have the lighting that we can we can bring in. That's scary. There you I, go. I didn't want to scare the poor lady with a big, <laughs> you know, big big. I think she we can see you as well. Craig. A big, a big, it's not a big just child that's getting scared by this. But um, <laughs> I, no, no, I agree with you on the content marketing. I would like to see people being, as I say, create more interesting content because there's right. so much bland boring and it's got to be you know i like to I, you know i've been doing a lot of things with you know 
software that does VSLs, video sales letters, but at the same time, it adds a little bit of um, panache, a little bit of spring sparkle to it, just so that when you get them, they're engaged. You know, mm -hmm. and I try to keep, you know, I try to keep a lot of the content, you know, video content, etc. I create, you know, down to about five, ten minutes just to make it a quick. Now, when you said you were using Periscope, how long are you running your Periscopes for? Okay, so I get asked this question a lot. How long should I be scoping for? And the answer and is I'll, always... And then, and then we'll get on to Mary Carla. Sorry, because she's been waiting there for a while. Yeah. So one more. Yeah, cool. That's okay. I'm so sorry. Um, she's in Australia. Yeah, so, she's in um, Australia. It's sunny there. Don't worry. <laughs> she's probably just getting up. She's just getting up. We're going to bed, so don't worry. You know. <laughs> Periscope sessions should be as short or as long as they need to be to get the point across. Just like a blog post just like a podcast, just like a blab, just like an infographic, just like any type of content that you create. If you can make a statement in two minutes, do three minutes of Q&A and do it right, that's where you stop your broadcast. Um, I, if, you want, if you want to say, go ahead and say, I'm going to be doing a 30-minute show, you better sure as hell shit have 30 minutes of content ready to deliver that is fluff-free and that can genuinely you know, provide value bombs uh, on a, on at least every three minutes or so. You need to drop one value bomb because with Periscope and just like with Blab, and we've had 368 people overall view this, but only 93 people right now are tuning in. That shows that there's that turnover of viewers. They come and go, and it's exactly the same on Periscope. So every couple of minutes, I mean, even less than that, every 60 seconds, you've got to be saying something that genuinely makes sense and provides value. Otherwise, whoosh, they're gone yeah. and you don't want them to go. You want them to stay, particularly if you've got something to sell. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Chris, for giving the time. Dan, thanks for giving the time. I'm going to pop out the seat and let this gorgeous lady who suits <laughs> you. Are you Mary, Mary, are you, are you from Australia, New Zealand? Or? <laughs> Where are you from? Like this guy. This yes, from, from, from Australia. <laughs> then, 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 you know, I'll, I'll quite happily, you know, give up my, my the space to, to a lady from down under. No right. problem. Well, thank you. You take Alrighty. care. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, Craig. Thank you very much for your question. Craig was a loose unit. Awesome. That was great. <laughs> that, was, that was good. Hi, Mary Hi. Carla. How are you going? How are you, darling? I'm good. What's happening? Yay, I'm so excited to be on the blab. I was calling you in and I was like, blab? Stan, got to explain. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved more than anything else. <laughs> Craig, 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 I'm sure Craig's a lovely bloke. He looks like he's a lovely bloke, but he mentioned kilts, uh, hammers, uh, and, and other stuff that scare me a little bit. Craig, I love you anyway. You're a good mate. <laughs> oh, I won't mention any of that. And I think I have a pretty quick question. Okay. Yes. Um, so I want to talk home pages. What is the most important thing to make sure that is on your home page? Uh, an opt-in form. Yes. Okay. So, like, up the top of um, your look, homepage? Look, under, understand, when people come to your homepage, nine times out of yeah. ten today, nine times out of ten today, if people come to your homepage, they've seen that homepage linked to on somebody else's website. Maybe you've been a guest on a show or they're linking you in one of their top ten lists or something like that. Or maybe they've seen it at a banner uh, at a conference or in a uh, brochure of some kind or something like that. So it's different to a lot of the links that you'll click on social, which will go directly to a piece of content, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So a piece of content, you always have to have an opt-in on the, on the sidebar, okay? Or at yeah. least embedded in the content somewhere. But with your homepage, that opt-in form should be front, center, above the fold, right at the top okay. of the website, and, and incorporate, obviously, some sort of sexy opt-in magnet, right? Um, and we've, we've just literally yesterday updated the homepage to chrisducker.com, where the form is basically, in fact, the design is basically the same, except for the fact that we've switched out the older photo of me, put a newer one in there, um, which is more in line with the whole kind of brand of the Upreneur thing and everything now. Um, and we've provided a brand new opt-in training course that just literally went live yesterday so um mm -hmm. you know this is well over a month of work of recording videos you know writing email content 
Uh, you know, the whole kit and caboodle is a brand new thing. It just went live yesterday. So I want to say there was nothing wrong with the opt-in that I had before, but it was mm -hmm. out of date. It did need okay. a facelift. It was converting still brilliantly, but it needed a facelift. So even though something is working well, after a period of time, you've got to give it a bit of a facelift and give it some new life, you know? Cool. And also, I have another question. Is that okay? Is anyone else yeah, 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 of course you have another question, you little oh, cool. cheeky thing. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> We're launching our podcast. This, this so I'm is, really excited. This is one half of the team that literally, when they were recording their testimonial at Tropical Think Tank last year, shushed our closing <laughs> keynote speaker, Lewis Howes. Like, full that on, was me. camera. He was off camera talking to someone, and they're like, shh, Lewis, <laughs> shh, we're doing something, shh. <laughs> and then you got it on camera. You got it on camera. That was the worst part. <laughs> anyway, launching our podcast, and I'm, it's part of Dan's challenge. It's very exciting. Good. So I can't remember if you said three or four episodes. Five. <laughs> five? Five episodes. You've got to launch with five episodes straight away. You have to. Anything lower than that, and you're missing a really good opportunity to just own new and noteworthy. The reason why, let's say we launch with one podcast, okay? Or let's say two podcast episodes. What happens is then when someone goes to that first episode and they like what they hear, all they've got after they've hit the subscribe button is two episodes to download. That's the number mm -hmm. two that registers with iTunes, okay? But if they've got five episodes, they're going to hit subscribe and download every single one of them. Now you've turned one visitor from one download to five downloads. And that's exactly what iTunes wants to see to rank you well in that new and noteworthy oh. section, right? We actually, me and Pat <laughs> Flynn, and you were there because you freaked us both out at the end of it when we came off stage. We did that presentation <laughs> about, now they came up and they were in perfect unison as they sometimes are. So, You're so awesome. She's usually oh, right here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and when, these women are mad. Um, but it was it was great. I fell in love with you guys at, at that event, actually. But Aww. what what happened um, at, at that presentation was quite funny that Pat was saying launch with three. And this was live in front of an audience. He was saying launch mm -hmm. with three. And I was like, no, launch with five. You always launch with five. No, 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 launch with three. No, five, no, three. And we were going backwards and forwards in front of 250 people or whatever it was in the room. It was like a domestic. It was a bit of a domestic. It was very entertaining. But the hilarious part of our <laughs> talk was when a slide that he had designed and put together popped up on the screen after he clicked it and it said, <laughs> launch with five episodes. I was like, that's it. The audience is done. It's, it's, that's it. They're toast. So I was right. He was wrong. So. Hashtag. Well, that's good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Mm. Well, I'm very excited to know that. And I'm now I've got to do one more podcast then because I've got four. So no, you've five. got to do more than that. You've got to do more than that. Let me give you another little tip <laughs> from a podcasting <laughs> perspective. You must get as many of these bad boys in the bank as you can before you launch. If that means you put off your launch for another month to get another five in the bag, you've got to do it. Because the seven days happens, startup, Chris. But I do have 50, I have like oh, 20. Hang on. Is the podcast start? It, hang on, wait a minute. Is the podcast part of the seven day startup? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But oh, Charlotte, but but Charlotte and Emma are very organized and they've been sneakily recording podcasts over the last three or four weeks and have actually got a bunch of them. Is that true? <laughs> It is true. I know it is because they must have interviewed me two weeks ago. So don't <laughs> try and. Yeah, we have heaps of interviews. That's but it. Like, you didn't she's like, she's like, she's like I shouldn't have come on the call. I should have just stayed <laughs> away in the background. <laughs> no, but continue, no, continue that, really Chris, because there's a lot of people doing podcasts yes. on the call. Yeah, no, I, I think it's important to have a good, you know, a good job lot of, of shows mm -hmm. recorded. Um, because, you know, let's say you go with a weekly show, for example, right? You launch with five and then you've got to start recording straight away. And you have to you have to go ahead and, and publish another one a week later. And you're kind of yeah. tired from the launch and you put a lot of energy into it. The last thing you want to do is start going into, you know, kind of maintenance mode of trying to create stuff on a regular basis. Everything that mm -hmm. I do podcasting wise, even now to this day, Everything that I do is batched. So what I do is I actually record four episodes of my show in one day every month. Mm -hmm. And that is for next months. So I'm done now 
for the whole awesome. of February. Everything is done for Youpreneur FM right the way through to the end of February. And I'll start recording March probably in a week from now. So I think that's where my schedule is. So I'm usually like four weeks in advance. We've got to batch them together, get them all done on one day for the month and then you can get back to work for a couple of weeks and then do another yeah. day of recording and so on and so on and so on and that's what i do and i've been like that i've done that as a, as a podcaster now for probably close to pretty much like four years i've been following that system and it served me yeah. really well the other reason why and i'll end on this point on podcasts the other reason why you've got a batch is because shit happens Shit goes down. You could get sick. You could lose your voice. You could have to travel at short notice. You know, you could be at mm -hmm. a conference, all these other things. You got to get them in the bag and then you know that you're all right. Mm -hmm. Plain simple. Totally. All right, that's Back a value everything. bomb. Can everybody give me some props right now, please? Thank you very much. No, I want the props. Oh, give me the props. Don't the props. You didn't say nothing. I was the one talking. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got almost a thousand um, props, Carla. From two questions. I know. Three it, more it, props it, than I do. Three more props than I do. Right now. Coming in now. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Did you have more? Or that's, oh, that's. Oh dear. Are you happy to? No, that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. And I'll see you. Oh. Are you swapped? Oh my God. No, wait. Hang on, Jerry. Someone. I've just read the comments down here. It says my toddler is trying to say S H I T. Thanks. Props. That's it. That's, I've now got kids swearing. That got you over That's the 2000, not, the 2000 mark. I, I didn't know this was a G-rated blab. I had no idea. I, I, I'll, I'll I didn't set those expectations. Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm great, Dan. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Chris. Great. I just want to come on and say hello to both of you. I am super psyched. I'm in both of your masterminds. And I want to tell you that this is not my first rodeo. I've been an entrepreneur multiple times. And you two have very unique personalities and you were both bringing very different things into your groups. And at first I thought, eh, I don't think I need both. And I'm so glad that I bought into both of them because you both have amazing qualities and you approach entrepreneur ventures differently. And it's really, and I feel like amazing. I should be video. I know. I'm just going to hang on. Right up. I'm going to Snapchat this. Just, I'm going to do that shit again. <laughs> Carry on, Jerry. Go on. No, really, I, I just wanted to say, you know, it's one of the biggest things I see. I mean, I've, I've got my own Facebook group as well, much smaller than yours. But one of the things I see is people get really intimidated because, you know, oh, no, there's a second Mexican restaurant in town. Maybe I should change my game. Maybe I should change my stall page. Maybe I should right. change my niche. And people get really scared and freaked out. And, and one of the things that I realize is that, you know, we all have something unique to what our experiences, our history, our background, you know, you've had a back injury, I've had a hip injury, I have a little kid, you know, we all have these different variables in our life that mean that we're going to play the game differently, right? So if we all play yeah. basketball together, we not, may all be able to shoot hoops, but differently, right? And so mm -hmm. that makes us valuable in different ways. And I would say to anybody that's on this call right now, if you're thinking, oh, well, should I go to Youpreneur or should I go to Seven Day Startup Pro? I would say, honestly, join both of them because I'm what you would call a very frugal person. I grew up with uh, grandparents from the depression. And even though they were really successful entrepreneurs, they became millionaires farming, which is pretty difficult. Uh, it, it taught me to be very tight with how I spend my money in business. And mm. it was a really hard decision, honestly, even though both your programs are affordable. And I tell my husband every day, I'm so glad because it's really, it's really gotten my brain to get into fast forward. And, you know, sometimes it's hard. I've got a three-year-old that's here. I work from home and I get interrupted a thousand times a day. And it's really easy to go, oh, Paw Patrol's on again. Paw Patrol. Only, only a thousand? God, <laughs> yeah, you're only a thousand. Only a thousand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really easy to go, oh, I'll just slow down today because my kid needs me. Or, you know, there's a thousand excuses a day as to why you should mm -hmm. slow down and not go fast forward. But yeah. it's been nice to be in your groups. And thank you, Chris, for finally getting on Facebook. I'm really happy about that. Um, you know, it's... It's nice because also you have drawn different personalities to your groups. So that's really cool too, that sure. I don't see a lot of crossovers in the groups. Um, and I think that the people in your group bring their own value as well. So I just want to say if anybody's on the call and not uh, sure, do them both. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. I really appreciate all the kind things because I mean, like it's, it's, it's one of those things also when I was planning Youpreneur and the launch and we're going all the way back now to 2013 when I had the idea for it, 20, 
2014 when I really started pulling the trigger, getting the domain name, putting plans in place, and then obviously 2015 with the launch. It shows you over a, a two-year period how serious I was about putting this community together. Um, and I'm even more serious now. Um, and I don't make a move business-wise, period, really, without really thinking about it. Um, not necessarily procrastinating, but thinking about it properly because I know that pretty much everything I do today comes down to my own personal reputation because of the fact that I built the business of you around me, right? My personal brand, which is what, you know, we're teaching inside of Youpreneur as well. But what I really love about all the very, very kind things that you just said, <laughs> and yes, the check is in the mail. Um, <laughs> I did what just I really get loved, your shirt. <laughs> what, I, what I really loved about everything that you said, there was one thing that, that popped out and that was that, you know, very unique communities, very unique styles, but also a different kind of demographic of people, so to speak, in both groups as well. And that's why nobody has a monopoly on good ideas when it comes to membership communities, when it comes to products, memory, it comes to services. And I say it all the time, I believe your vibe will attract your tribe. And I say that all the time. And that right there is a clear testimonial right there of that fact that you will attract the right kind of people for you your mm -hmm. business and the people that you want to hang out with they will come your way and those that are not the right type of people they will they will disappear they'll go they won't spend any money with you they won't open your emails they'll unfollow you on twitter and i'm absolutely fine with that and everybody else should be as well you know you should add the caveat that they will only do that if you show your true self if you connect yes. as yourself, mm -hmm. as Chris, as Dan, then absolutely the right people will show up in your house and garner whatever knowledge you can give to them. But if you, Chris, try to be Emma or Dan tries to be Carla, probably the right people aren't going to show up because they're not going to see you for who you really are. Sure. And so, you know, I think it's really important that people say, hey, who am I? What value do I bring to the world? How am I different from the guy next door? And then start really identifying that and as you say, you know, create the movement around that. Because yeah. if you mm -hmm. have this fake facade, it's you're building like this glass glass house, <laughs> really. So no, you're hundred percent right. You're hundred percent right. And I, I didn't come on just to compliment you, though. I do have a question. Oh, you have a question? <laughs> I do. I could, it's actually for both of you. Now she's pushing the luck. We should. Yeah, we should I know. Roll right now. I'm from no, Texas, y'all. <laughs> we can't say no now. You can ask as many questions as you want. Absolutely. Cool. So, so really it's for both of you because I've seen both of you do it. Um, when do you know when to start increasing your price? You now you, a lot of people do an introductory price, especially if you don't have a well-known brand. I mean, both of you actually have pretty well-known brands at this point, but a lot of people on this call, a lot of people in the startup challenge don't have well-known brands. They don't have brands at all. It's their first time, whatever. They're still working their main job. Even for those of us who do have a brand and have been working that brand for a while, how do you know sort of what price point to start at and then go up? And I ask because I recently was at a conference and I was verbally price testing. And so I got great feedback doing that, yeah. but there's something very different from verbally price testing and have people like not flinch versus them actually pulling their credit card. And I'm getting ready to write the email that says, Hey dudes, this is, this is actually live. Here's the buy button. And I'm kind of trying to figure out my tier structure. Hmm. You just go balls out and throw the throw the big price that people didn't flinch at when I was at the conference, or do I say, "Hey, for the first ten people, you get X for Y. For the next ten people, you see what I'm saying? Like, do you give a tier structure because they're the first people, the founding members? What is that overdone? I think, you know, I I I I think that ultimately you need to do what is right for you and your brand and your product or service or whatever it is that you're offering. Um, you know, pricing is one of those things. And I love the fact that you just said balls out, by the way. Um, I, I think that- I am from Texas, Chris. <laughs> you're from Texas, y'all. Yeah, um, I, <laughs> I think that, um, I think pricing is one of those things that a lot of people get wrong when they're first starting out in business because nine times out of 10, I think that they don't have, um, the i think I, I think it's a lack of confidence i think and maybe the fear of rejection and that sales 101 right there um what i i can only talk i can only attest to what you know the pricing you know adventures that i've had perfect two two perfect examples first and foremost virtual star finder when we launched virtual star finder we did it at 350 dollars 
And I knew going in that that was lower than I wanted it to be long term because right. scalability wise, it's a service. It's not a digital product that you download. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking once and, it's, it's, <laughs> and I knew, right, I knew that I would have to have staff. I knew that as we grew in popularity, that I'd have to bring in more staff, what brings in more running costs, et cetera, et cetera. So I knew it out of the gate that it wasn't where I wanted it to be long term but we went at 350 to build up a client base to get those testimonials and case studies to get people talking about us and all the rest of it and by the end of the first year we went up to 395 then a competitor decided to come along and basically rip off our entire website pretty much word for word the entire business model pretty much word for words and um kind of launched themselves as another virtual star finder I'm fine. Like, you know what? I got very thick skin. If you want to rip my shit off, that's absolutely fine. But, but you know, don't expect to do it and not have me retaliate on your ass because it will happen, right? So we went overnight. We went from 395 bucks to $495. So we were now $100 more expensive than what they were. They thought that they were going to end up getting additional business because of the fact that they were actually cheaper now than us. Um, but ultimately what they did, they actually did me a favor because pricing it up at $495 made it look more premium. Right. And we've never looked back since. It, it's right. It's been a great price battle to be involved with. And that company subsequently went bust about six months later. So that's the first thing is don't be scared to increase those prices if you have to as part of pivoting with the market and competitors coming up and things like that. The other thing I will say is that with Youpreneur, when we launched Youpreneur, you know, it's a membership, right? It's recurring. And, you know, there's a lot of people, um, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, will price as the market prices. So $30 a month is a big kind of membership type number. Everybody throw it's a dollar a day, join now, you know, that kind of crap. Um, and I don't really believe in that. I think you should price up what you feel uh, or price in the way that you feel that you deliver the value and it's uh, consistent and, and with your brand and what you're all about. And I have, I, I would say I have more of a premium type brand anyway, what with tropical think tank, you know, that's a four, that's $4,000 ticket. You know, it's not cheap. My events aren't cheap, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that, you know, when we went into that, we knew that we wanted to be more than most other membership sites out. Then we had no problems with that. We launched at $49. We made a big splash. And then we did a scarcity launch um, when we went up to $59 a month. Um, and in two days, we had over 200 members sign up um, because they wanted the $49 a month price before it went up to 59. So don't be scared to create scarcity. Don't be scared to um, ultimately price what you really feel you're worth. Right. Um, and lastly, don't be scared to pivot with the market as and when you need to as well. And we've made, we've, we've played around a lot with the pricing. You know, we've gone pure monthly. We've gone pure annual on our landing page. We've gone up to $5.99 a year now from $5.29. And newsflash, zero drop in signups on the annual per capita in terms of conversion numbers, zero drop from $5.29 to $5.99 a year, zero. So I'm instantly making an extra 70 bucks a year right there. So don't be scared to play around with prices is, is really what I'm coming All right. to. Is that kind of where you're at too, Dan? Um, so a couple of things I'd add quickly would be, um, Chris sort of mentioned pricing at what you feel is, what, what sort of feels right, or he said it in a way that didn't sound quite so lovey-dovey and hippie as that. But um, I, I always... When I started WP Curve, I always just felt like the sort of entrepreneur that would start a business that had a thousand customers paying a hundred dollars a month, as opposed to a hundred customers paying a thousand dollars in a month. And I felt with the style of marketing I did, um, with with the the sort of selling I wanted to do, which is very indirect, very content driven, value um, brand building sort of marketing, not selling in person. I felt that that kind of lower price product with a lot more customers was a much better fit for me. And I was told constantly by everybody that I needed to charge a shitload more. And I was able to build a, bu a business doing a million dollars a year with a thousand customers paying a hundred bucks a month. Um, and that's that, that's the same thing I do with my membership. It's, it's not as expensive as some of the, some of the others. I do annual only um, 
because I want to have a membership with 500 members paying $200 rather than 200 members paying $500. It feels feels better for me to do that. Um, on, on the um, scarcity thing, there's just nothing that sells like scarcity. And it's I don't like to do it in a cheesy sort of disingenuous way, like constantly doing scarcity campaigns over the course of 18 months and saying you're going to shut it and open yeah. it. And I mean, I don't like that. But there's no doubt that you do want to reward people who get in early, that they're going to be your biggest advocates. Um, and I did the same thing with my community. I was actually thinking of, with mine doing a, a reduced price during the seven day startup challenge. So anyone who joins during the challenge gets at a reduced price and do the challenge, you know, every three, three months or six months. And outside of that, it goes back to normal pricing, which is a bit of an alternative way to do it because there's a lot of hype around the challenge. It's right when people have, want their problem solved, you get that inbuilt scarcity, but it's not dishonest. It's just saying, if you want to sign up while we're all doing this and it together, it's going to be cheaper and you're going to get right. the same effect of the scarcity without doing that long-term sort of anything. And I can keep doing that. I can keep doing that forever. So that's something I'm going to play around with. It. And there's no doubt that the scarcity thing works. And, and I think it's a good idea to reward early members too. So yeah, is it, I, I don't have a membership. Mine's more of a marketplace platform. So the idea yep. was to maybe have three or four tier jumps, just, you know, obviously the first one saying get the better deal, the better price, more bells and whistles. Is there a time frame that is ideal for that? You know, a month, price jump every week. Just I think. I mean, I I think that number of people. You, you, yeah, you need to do it in a short amount of time as possible to create that that influx. Quite frankly, of sales. Like Forty-eight right? hours, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that might be a little short. But I mean, like for instance, if we look like at a one month launch, for example, right? And you've got four pricing tiers. It, it's perfect to just do it every week, and you'll see a whole bunch of people will get on uh, the first week. And you got to tell them up front the price is going up every week for the next four weeks. Okay. Like it will never be this low, and you'll get a bunch of people come in straight away. Then you get the stragglers between the second and the third weeks. That you'll you'll see a few sales dripping in here and there, but you know a lot of people just read stuff, they look at stuff, they watch stuff, and then they don't take any real action. And you'll see then on your last price increase, you'll get another big spike of people coming through where they could have gotten in two weeks earlier, even a right. week earlier, at a smaller amount of money in terms of their investment, but they didn't take the action. And now it comes to the point where this is the final time before the price goes up to where it will be long term. And at that point, you'll see a load of people coming in as well. Um, and I think you know that that in itself is a, is a good enough strategy. But again, make the price jumps you know, big enough where it's really worthwhile for people to come in, but not too big where it scares people away. But one mm. thing, and I, want, I really want to mention this. Is that, is that a big enough jump? Well, it depends on what they're getting, obviously, right? So, you know, if if, you're, if your end price is, say, Dinner 500 with bucks. Sorry? Dinner with Chris. <laughs> That's what you're bucks. getting. Dinner with Chris. <laughs> Someone's going to pay me a lot more than 100 bucks, darling. Um, <laughs> I'm from London, y'all. <laughs> no, I, I think that, um, I, you know, if your end price is, say, let's say your end price is $100, for example. Mine's four or price, $500. Your end price is 500 bucks, mm -hmm. right. So I would launch, say, you know, the first one I would launch at, say, 250 And then the second one being maybe 300 The third one being 350 The last one being four. And then the final price is 500 Something okay. along those lines. Cool. But I just want to say that on pricing, and this is really, really important, uh, and you're a youpreneur. You've heard me say this probably countless times. Dan, I know you've heard me say this a few times before. But if you're looking to build any kind of influence online in any way, shape, or form, if you're looking to sell anything, market anything at all, and actually turn what you do online into a real profitable business, you must be seen to sell. I cannot stress that enough. It just plain upsets me when I see bloggers and podcasters and anybody else doing what they're doing online, providing value and doing content. You must be seen to sell. These bloggers, they're putting all this content out for free, putting all this, this help and support out for free, and they're not doing anything in terms of putting a price tag on at least something. Um, and you must be seen to sell. 
to create influence and obviously to make money. I mean, you've, you've got to sell, you can't. And I used to rip in the pat about this all the time because, you know, he, he was that, you know, the, the, the affiliate marketer mindset of I'll do a really good review and I'll provide a click and I'll make money that way. Well, yeah, that's okay. And that's fine. And he does it better than most people you'll come across in terms of affiliate marketing. But for the longest time, a couple of years, I was on his butt all the time and we'd be hanging out with each other. Bro, you've got to create something of your own. You've got to produce something of your own. You've got to put a price tag on something. Um, and really the last 18 months of Pat, and I've said this you know, a few times with interviews and stuff recently, because his name always pops up because you know people know we're so close. The fact of the matter is, is that he has become his own CEO in the last year and a half. I have seen that happen. He stopped thinking like a blogger. Now he's thinking like a business owner. Right. Um, and I love the fact that, and I know what he's got in the pipeline and it, it's going to blow everybody's heads to bits. I, I know what he's working on and now he's, now he's really doing, now he is going to be seen to sell right. and that will just put his influence through the roof because it's already sky high in it as it is absolutely mm -hmm. well thank you guys dan chris i appreciate it i'm gonna take a picture of you guys as soon as you stop drinking let's do it all right here we go let me see yeah she's getting all artistic dan look at this well, i was trying to move it out of my face i'm not that i'm not a videographer here come on take the bleeding photo god oblige me oh what's dan doing just thumbs up no i'm doing the here i'll get you i'll get my gun Thank you guys. I appreciate your time. Now, as, as Chris's Chris camera so froze, or is he just loves his phone so much? You can stop now, Chris. Awesome. You guys rock. Cameras Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Thanks, Jerry. Have a great night. All right. We've, we've maxed out the hour. Um, Let's go. Let's keep going. Oh, really? Okay. All right. 10 minutes more. Let's do 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes more. All right. We've definitely we got, got a shit coming on now. Leaky's, so Leaky's coming on. I'm not sure how long these guys have been waiting because they've got a long list here. Hey, Leaky. What's sure. up? Hey, guys. How you going? Oh, I'll make it quick because I know you want to get off the air. Um, I was five minutes late, so I don't know if, I, if you already answered this question, but I'll make it quick so you can get onto it. So I guess the um, this is all about selling uh, via web, right? And you've gone off track and you've started talking about podcasting and uh, you know live video versus um, pre-recorded video and, and the rest of it. There are so many different platforms out there now. Where do you start and how do you... you um, what approach do you take and what a platform do you use? And is it different services or is it different personalities or how do you, you know, there's, there's so much out there in the world now. So yeah, from Snapchat to YouTube to Facebook mentions to, to all the, the different um, topics, go for it. Platforms for social media or for doing video or? Well, it's, in the end, it's all about selling, right? So it's all about getting your name out there, getting your brand out there. It's all, all about trying to generate the activity online. So, um, that's that's the I guess the opinion I, I have in it. It's all about getting your your personal brand out there to obviously put it back to um to your website or to your membership program or what you're selling online. Yeah, um, um to, to me, it's 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 not about selling. It's about creating content that's gonna um help people in a way that works on that platform for them and for you. And and Chris mentioned before. Um, platforms like Periscope and, you know, doing stuff consistently. Well, one of the things I've learned over the last couple of years is if you're going to choose, a, if you're going to choose a platform to put content out on, A, you want to choose one that has you putting really good content out on that platform. If you're a shitty video guy, just don't do video and don't just, don't listen to anyone who says you, you have to because <laughs> you suck at it. It's going to be shit. No one's going to like it. That's, um, that's the tip. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I love this. Tip of the year. If you're a shitty video guy, don't do video. <laughs> well, the other part of that, it's not, it's not just the fact that, that you're going to suck and people will notice that. It's the fact that the point that Chris made before around you have to do it consistently. And that is actually really challenging to go to a new platform that you find that it just doesn't feel quite right for you. And it's, it's challenging and you don't feel like you can do a really good job at it. Um, sometimes you, you pick up an app and you start using it and it just feels right. And sometimes you do it and it doesn't feel right. And I would encourage you to double down on the ones that A, feel like you're doing stuff that's good for your audience on, like that's actually useful. Um, and B, wh whichever one is is getting traction um, that seems to be abnormally high. So, you know, I, I've, I'm looking at Snapchat and Periscope at the moment and I'm favouring Snapchat over Periscope because I'm getting more traction there and it feels more comfortable. 
And I think that's a good enough reason for me to choose that over the other one because it'll mean that I can do it more consistently. So that, that's, that's one thing that goes into my mind when I think about it. Yeah, okay, great. For me, I, I'm, because I, I mean, obviously, you know my brand. I mean, I'm all about the personal brand, right? So, you know, for me, um, it was, and I'll, I'll mirror what Dan was saying in regards to like finding the platforms where you feel comfortable and where you know that you can deliver the most amount of content. There are way too many platforms out there for us to be on all of them all the time. It's just not possible. Um, I mean, just live streaming alone, you've got Periscope, Blab, Miracat, you've got this other one, MeV, that's just popped up out of nowhere, you know, and there's, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them. What I'm really interested to see is where's YouTube in this game? Like when YouTube come out with their own streaming app and you know that they will at some point, that might actually change the game um, for me and for a lot of other people that are active on places like Blab and Facebook mentions and Periscope and whatnot. For me, Periscope was where I just, I, I just feel very, very comfortable scoping, and that's where I do all my live video. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy, you know, a good old blab every now and then. Um, but, but to go back to your original question in regards to like getting people back to your website, you've got to ask for it. You know, I, I think a lot of a lot of people are almost scared to. Um, ask for people to take action. They want to be that 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 you know, value giver, that content giver, that deliverer of of great help and support and all the rest of it. But the fact is, if you don't on a scope or even on this blab right here, if, you know, whatever it is, if you don't turn around and say, if you like what you're hearing right now, if you're appreciating the content that I'm sharing with you here on this blab right now, you must pop over to chrisducker.com and sign up for access to my free Youpreneur Launchpad course. It'll really help you build up your personal brand. And by the last video, you'll know exactly how you can start monetizing that personal brand. Go ahead to chrisducker.com and check it out right now. Boom. It's a 30-second CTA. You slam that on a 20-minute periscope three, four times quite nicely because you've got that turnover of people coming in and out all the time. You will get people go from that blo that broadcast over to your website and opt in. It, it happens every single time. You've got to tell people what to do, you know, as well as just help them. I'm a big, big believer in that. And ultimately, you're providing more content once they opt in anyway. So what they're going to do, be upset with you? Of course not. Yeah, right. Perfect. Great answer. I was going to say to that, it's, 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 I still think, I don't, I still think you're almost not selling. You're, you're still delivering content. Um, and, and you're and you're doing. I mean, you can call you can call it what you want to call it, but there's a very big difference between saying like, you know, come over to my service and buy from me on one of these periscopes. Then you know, if you like this topic, I've got something a lot more interesting and in depth that you can get on my website, and that gets them from you know, if, it, if it's an A to Z process of hearing about, about you to buying, that gets them from A to B, and eventually they'll get to Z. It's it's not a case of of um. You know, you've just found out about me. We'll get you to Z, and we'll sell you straight away, and you're going to buy shit from me. Um, so, and if you've got content at every step of the way that fits well with that platform, so already Chris has talked about having a podcast. They've probably heard of, heard him on a podcast. They've yeah. you've heard him mention Periscope, so they've got on Periscope. They've had a listen. They've heard him talk about his site where he's got a, an ebook or some sort of giveaway on his landing page. Um, that's already four or five pieces of content. He's got an email sequence sitting behind that. That. Uh, the ebook or whatever it is that's giving people even more value. Um, that, that's already, you know, five different platforms and a whole bunch of different content that's helping the person probably before he's even mentioned them becoming a customer. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of content at every step and it's not, it's not necessarily selling them on your servers. It, it might be selling them on taking the next step um, in, in that content path. Yeah. yeah, it's very true. Well, I suppose I joined Periscope because Chris Ducker said to. Yeah, and you might not buy something from Chris. I, I don't know you personally, but quite often, you know, it's not uncommon to get people buying from you after they've heard of you for five or six years. I had a guy join my membership the other day who knew me from Flying Solo, which is a small business forum that I joined probably in 2008. And he joined my, my, my seven-day startup pro a couple of weeks ago because he'd heard about me in Flying Solo literally eight years earlier. Um, and that's not that uncommon. Yeah, okay. Just keep the just keep the consistency happening, and eventually it'll it'll feed on through. Yeah, that's yeah, like key. And, and focus, and focus on, on the value. 
Sorry, mate. That, 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 in Periscope, it's it's key. I mentioned it once before, and for anybody that popped on since then, li just anything live video related, the key is consistency. If you want to build up a follower on that particular plat uh, app or platform, you've got to be really, really consistent. Very, very, very consistent with your your scopes, with your broadcast, whatever it is. Because without it, people won't know when to tune in to watch you. And that, for me, was the biggest thing when I really went like, Balls to the wall, hardcore into you know Periscope middle of last year. Everybody knew I was on every time, and and I've told people that I've taken a little bit of a break to be able to build up momentum for the. Re actually, we're relaunching Duckerscope properly in February, first week of February, where we're actually going to be on three times a week. So people know it's coming, and once we're four weeks into that particular schedule, they'll know exactly what time, what day. That will be happening each week, and it you need to be consistent. You need to let people know what's going on. Well, it's a flip side. It actually gives you accountability to make sure that you you make that happen. Mm. Also, I think it can be a bit overwhelming. Like like someone like Chris has got an amazing team that works with him. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Um, putting up with him all day, but um, you know they get paid um, real well. It all comes <laughs> down to money. It's all money, man. <laughs> But I think it, it can be daunting. I remember sort of looking at like like when I was starting out, looking at these guys that are doing a lot of stuff online and they, they got all this stuff happening and they're telling everyone like be everywhere. And it's just like I think you also need to work with what you have. And so if, if you can only choose one platform, um, I think you're much, much, much better just choosing one platform. And if that's all the capacity you have, um, then just make sure that you're choosing one with high growth and something that feels right, something where you can deliver really good content. And it, it feels like you can do consistently, like like Chris said, um, rather than you know feeling the pressure to be in eight different places at once because everyone says you have to. I, I have people telling me every day I have, I have to have a Facebook page. Um, I still don't have a Facebook page, and things are going quite fine, you know. Um, yeah. So I think you got to question some of those assumptions and and do do more of what's working rather than just absolutely being everywhere. Yeah, and I guess when because when I was over in the Philippines, I did the thirty day video challenge, which was great uh, in the first week when you're getting you know, 1,500 or 2,000 people watching, but then Facebook put restrictions or limitations around the reach that they were actually pushing it out to unless you actually paid Facebook money. So I guess understanding yeah. limitations of different platforms as well before jumping into it because um, I, I wasn't aware of that reach um, limitation. I remember actually, I, I actually remember seeing one or two of those pop up. I don't know how, like maybe it was in a Twitter stream. I saw a link or something like that, and I remember thinking to myself, young white boy, Walking around the Philippines with a mobile phone like this everywhere in the streets, he's asking for trouble. Where were, were you actually in Cebu? Yeah, Cebu. Yeah. You never did. You did you ever reach out to me? Yeah, we connected, and you were in London or New York oh, or somewhere. Okay. I can't remember. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm all. I'm all about meeting up with people if I can for a quick coffee when when they're in town. So let me know when you're in town next. We'll do it. Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> what, yeah, one of the other things about the, the, the social network thing is, I think. I think the social networks are also on a bit of a curve where there is opportunities to get in early sometimes before the algorithms kick in and they and they sort of make you pay to play, which is more or less what Facebook has turned into now. If you're getting started now, it's going to be very, very hard to build an organic reach from scratch on Facebook. It might be a lot easier to build it on Snapchat or Periscope. Um, there's more risk associated with that because it's not, you know, the Snapchat and, and Periscope might not be around in four or five years' time. But... You, there's definitely much higher growth on the new platform, so I think you need to weigh up weigh up those two things. Yeah, no, perfect. I'll do some research into it. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Lukey. Um, Fifteen past. We just had a comment saying we weren't talking much about websites on the side. That is that is true, but we did open up at the start to ask any questions about websites, and most of the questions were about other stuff. So. That's kind of the way yeah. it went. Um, I've, I've, I've been firing off a few replies here and there as I've seen them popping up as yep. well. Good. So I think we'll we'll wind up there. Otherwise, you're going to be literally spending all day on this. But this is, I mean, I can tell how good a session is based on how many questions I have. And it's been nonstop questions and call-ins. And I've still got a shitload more that I'm going to have to say no to. But um, we'll be here all day otherwise. But thank you so much for being generous with your time, Chris. Um, if I didn't ask you to share what people are supposed to do after this session, then I know you'd kill me. So. So what would you suggest people do if they like a little bit of Chris Ducker action? Well, I mean, look, we've talked a lot about personal brand and, and putting, um, you know, yourself sort of front and center to build up those relationships and further the sales funnel and all that sort of stuff. So genuinely, I know I did it as an example earlier on uh, with Lucas there, but 
Um, I will say genuinely, I would love for people, if they're into the whole building a business based around your brand, utilizing the web, podcasting, live streaming, all that sort of stuff, I'd love for them to go and check out the Upana Launchpad. They can just go to chrisducker.com. It's right there, front and center at the top of the site. It's a brand new course. Um, it's got a combination of uh, slide deck training, live video footage of me on stage training, and a whole lot of other stuff mixed in as well. So if uh, they want to go over to chrisducker.com and check it out, that'd be awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow, but I'll be active in the Facebook group today. Actually, I'm about to post something in there with a whole bunch of contact details for me if you guys are feeling overwhelmed for today because it's going to be a big day. Um, but thank you so much, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for being really generous with your time today. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. See you, mate. All righty. Um, if anyone has any questions for me, I'll just keep this open. I'm going to stop the recording.